until you hear the reason, you kind of feel uneasy. It's like, why don't you like this thing? Why don't you like me? You know, it's like, <laughs> well, you know, what's the reason that I do something wrong? You're hypercritical about all this judgment, which is usually why I push pause. It's like, I'm going to withhold judgment on anything that we've done because I think it's great. Let me wait till I hear his reason. This is Blind, a brand strategy design consultancy based in Santa Monica, California. Since 1995, Blind has used the power of design to help diverse clients reach their customers and stand out in the marketplace. In this series, you'll get a rare glimpse behind closed doors and see the process of rebranding a company from start to finish. This is Building a Brand. On our last episode of Building a Brand, Blind's team of designers Emily, Min, and a new addition, Emmanuel Ritchie, created the first round of logos to present to Hamilton. Emily worked on round and square logos with a focus on typography. Min focused on perfecting a mark that will identify Hamilton in any circumstance, and Emmanuel created several hand-drawn logos. Ben and Matthew culled these down to four choices and presented them to Josh and Kristen at the brewery. The Hamiltons ultimately chose the circular hand-drawn logo, which fit into their overall DIY aesthetic. After getting their feedback, Matthew worked closely with Emmanuel to further refine that design. However, after taking the revision to the Hamiltons, Matthew and Ben received some unexpected feedback. I know we don't normally like getting these things where a client will draw over your work and send it back and what about this idea? I know that's the most frustrating thing in the world that a designer can get because it feels like they're disrespecting your process. I get that. But what I take from this is that I have a voice in this, I want to be heard and I think there's an idea here. And when I looked at the work that was sent over to us, I actually feel like there's a lot of good thought that went into it. And I think there's something here that we can carve out and refine. At this point, I've really got my eye on the timeline, and I don't think that there's time left to tackle this concept. With just one more round left to create a logo that the Hamiltons will love, Matthew and Ben hop on a call with Josh to discuss the specific alterations that he did to the logo. In doing so, Matthew and Ben hope to pull insights that will get them across the finish line. The last round we, we posted was uh, round two, and uh, we have one more round to go. And uh, your feedback, you had looked like the lockup was in a decent place, but then you had some thoughts about the uh, interchanging the monogram in the center. Yeah, I think our thoughts, or at least my thought, I don't want to speak for Kristen, was um, mm -hmm. if it was going to be just an H that had like a design element to it, um, mm -hmm. is there any way to, to tie, or since it is going to be the H, Mm -hmm. some kind of meeting as to why we designed it a certain way. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I was thinking about it, um, like that one I came up with is almost kind of like a lowercase and all that stuff. There's mm -hmm. a little bit about our story in there and then like, I mean, there was a crude drawing that I gave you that I just whipped that out in like two minutes. It almost makes like the, the pitch of a roof and then the archway like from the lowercase mimics the archway of the text. Mm -hmm. It also creates like a door if the serifs on the inside aren't there. Mm -hmm. And so there's kind of, so it has the idea of like there's a house, there still is the H thing. And I just thought that that might accomplish both like what we decided the direction we want to go to, but then also have a little bit of our unique business history in the logo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I think the challenge here that we've already explained to you all is that the purpose of logos is to identify, not explain. And I think Ben is pretty bullish on that in terms of that position. And I, I agree, I agree. If you think of the most popular logos in the world, do they even mean anything? Apple, what does that have to do with computers? Right, so we just need to create a strong mark. At the same time, it's nice if there is some hidden meaning in there. I, I think, I always like those little moments, like the FedEx logo, seeing that little arrow in there, it's a nice little gesture, a nice little nod. Amazon, love it or hate it, there's that smile in there that's connecting A to Z because they sell everything. So there's little moments like that that tell a little bit about the brand that I think can be fun while still making it a very iconic mark. So I think for this challenge, even though Josh is very adamant of wanting to infuse meaning into this particular aspect of his logo. I don't think that it's wrong to feel that way and I don't think that we can't solve both issues. Oh, I know we can solve any problem. The thing that I'm running up against is time. One thing that we haven't told you guys before is that we took on this job at a reduced rate to be able to produce this show. And so here we are 
this close to the finish line and they want to change directions. Now, normally with a, with a normal client, it would just be, hey, okay, if we go over it, that's going to be an overage. But I know that that's not on the table. And so we're, we're skating so close to the wire with this last minute change that I'm worried, not just for the project as a whole, but also for this company, because I know that there is a limit to what we can do here. And I don't know if you guys already talked about this guy just came in, but I think like this might seem like it's coming out of left field because we like we do love like the like what you guys have come up with and I know that we said last time oh we like this, you know, as we were like kinda of looking at it and we saw like we were at like a local church so this last weekend and then we saw like the age state like almost an, a, identical to that thing. So we're like, gosh, this is like not the exact same thing, but like this H with like the slants upwards, like that done in our city mm -hmm. already. Right. Um, so we don't you know, we don't want to um, go through all of this and have something so similar to something that's like a right. mega church in our city. Yeah, right. Like the hillside. I yeah. see. Right. <clears throat> Where the line sloped up like a hill. Uh, like I see. I was like, holy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 so Josh had kind of already done like, a, that's where that hop tree thing came from. Mm -hmm. It was from a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, watching the future uh, YouTube yeah. stuff. I remember last time we yeah. visited, you uh, showed us the progression of artwork from day zero all the way up to this okay. latest round. Yeah. So we did see this and um, you know, I'm still impressed by that thing because I, I, I like it. Uh, me and uh, Ben were talking between the two uh, options that you had put forward. I, I personally really like the tree hop house. I know it's like a combination of those three things, right? I've, I've been here before. I've been here <laughs> plenty of times before where we're in the 11th hour, but this is how diamonds are made. This is when the pressure is all over you and you're forced to produce something good. And for whatever reason, that pressure, at least for me and the teams that I've worked with, I feel like that we always produce our best work when now there's something real that's challenging our process and we have to put our creative mind to work and solve this very complex puzzle pieces that Josh has given us. I've also been in these situations before and it's really difficult to hit a moving target. That's what I feel like we're facing here mm. because all throughout this process, we've talked about we're gonna stay away from using an icon, using any kind of illustration. Mm -hmm. You know, Josh even said in one, in one meeting, he doesn't want a hop. Oh, you mean like it's not a it's hop? It's not like there's not like a hop somewhere because I feel like that's the easy thing to go. Yeah. And there's only so many ways you can draw a hop. We've built this thing together throughout this entire process and backtracking to square one and trying to rebuild when we're this close to finishing that's what's bringing me to this kind of point of frustration. So, I mean, mm -hmm. when is enough enough? Well, the thing is, I don't think that we're completely going to square one. It's one facet in, of the entire logo. So I look at this thing, it's like he's fine with the rest of it. They've been fine with the rest of it since they've seen it. We were talking about just having some kind of marker icon, something that's gonna be identifiable for your guys' brand. And I think that this is something that's unique and interesting, right? Because it still feels like your tree from before yet yeah. you are able to infuse the story of a hop in there and then the the house. But you know, I, I look at that thing and you know, I feel like it probably could use a little bit of work just to refine that form. I'm primarily looking at the shape of the, the branches of the tree. It kind of looks like two A's back to back and it's something that's throwing me off a little bit about that. Oh yeah, I can totally see that now. Yeah, it's like one of those things, last time you saw the Z or the two <laughs> and you couldn't unsee yeah. that. Yeah. Of the two directions, I, I feel like I really like that unique uh, little emblem that you made there. So I would like to see if uh, we could share that with the design team here and just explore refining that, knowing the root of where that came from. Okay. Yeah. You know that big? Or, is, this is, our, is this our last like shot at nailing this part of it or? Yeah, I, I think for for the logo, we are on the last round. So my goal today really is just to make sure that I understand, obviously, the motivation going in this direction, which I think is pretty clear to us now. As you saw in our last round in the ra round two uh, PDF, there was a system that we're working out, right? As far as what is the logo, what does the brand look like across different sizes from really big and large from this complete lockup all the way down to a tiny, tiny mark. So we got to make sure that the, the system is going to work across the board. If you know, I were to pose it out there, because obviously you still have two options here. The, the tree is something that's from the legacy brand. And then the monogram is something that, you know, we've been proposing and pushing forward. And you have two options here. Are you leaning one way towards the other? 
I think we've always, I mean, I'll speak for myself, I've always liked the idea of the H. Like, every time you guys have proposed an H, like, that's kind of what we have been going towards. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're not. No, I, I, could be, okay. I could be happy with either three. The one that you guys currently did, but I think my concerns would still just kind of eat at me. Yeah. But I could still go that route, but I, I definitely would love it if they're doing an H, if there's actually some reason behind it. So if someone says, oh, you're just ripping off these guys, you're like, oh, no, no, no. What we'll do is we'll continue to refine that form. We'll see what it looks like across uh, some different applications to make sure that does work uh, across the brand. And then the next round, we will look at that in a more refined form so that uh, we can all make the decision if that was the best way to go or if we could just revert back to this uh, monogram H. Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you, guys. After the call, Ben and Matthew feel confident in their understanding of what the client is looking for. However, this doesn't mean that Ben and Matthew are on the same page regarding how to move forward. Their original brand is growing on me, even though it's not the most like aesthetically refined. Mm -hmm. Like I will miss that if we lose the tree a little bit. So that's starting mm -hmm. to grow on me a little bit. So when I saw the tree, I, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, the tree is kind of back in there. That's kind of a nice transition from where they're at to where they're going. Yeah. So it's like just taking a little bit of that legacy. So that's one reason that I ended up becoming a champion for that mm -hmm. particular direction versus the, the monogram and then hearing the, the reason behind why they didn't want to pursue this particular monogram, then it's like, okay, well, are we going to run into that over and over again? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're doing it. <laughs> and it is a massive challenge for a week, but let's do it. With the decision made to move forward on exploring the tree mark, Matthew and Ben will turn over every rock to find the right answer. So it's been a couple days since we got Josh's feedback and Josh and Kristen's feedback. It's like he wants to do three things. He wants to capture the story of selling his house, mm -hmm. um, hops to represent the beer, and then his original family tree, which is in the current logo, which is part of the, the heritage, right? Since then, we've had Minard Designer explore a couple of variations from there. So this was the original starting from the top left, and she started with a couple things that are more asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not far enough because it still has the same issues, right? Like yeah. the stem is a little too small and I lose the house as soon as that becomes asymmetrical. It's like doesn't read like an house, as a mm -hmm. house at all. Then she started using more structural things, which again, I start to see a little bit more of the house, but then, you know, by these points, it feels like a matchstick that's on fire. Mm -hmm. It's like now I don't read any of them. And these ones that look like she tried to bring in, kind of break the mold a little bit and start bringing in more of the shape of the hops, which I like. And, you know, we pulled up some references here of what that could actually look like. And I really like the form of the mm -hmm. hop. Like, I think they're quite interesting looking, mm -hmm. right? And I'm glad she started exploring this, but I feel like, you know, just the gaps in the logo here, that they're not resolved for me. Mm -hmm. Like, like this reads most like a hop, but does it... We kind of lose the house and... It's also kind of like flowery too. Yeah. Because if you notice that all the reference, the hop is facing downward. And I think that's the way it grows on the plant. Right. So the stem is always on the top. Mm. So it's kind of difficult to translate that, flip it upside down when you're looking at something as simple as this. Right. So some random person on the street might not get hop from this at all. They might get flower. You know, let's just look at these three shapes and see different configurations of how we can put this together because even though men's effort obviously there's a ton here I feel like none of them is working like none of them are better than this mm -hmm. already is one way we could do this is since this is the most important this tree in the hop or at least that's how I'm assigning it in terms of it's a beer company and mm -hmm. the at least we can get the tree in there this is kind of a nice convenience what if we were to play with something where we knock the house out of here. Kind of like a little Monopoly house or something. Mm -hmm. So at least we can maintain how symmetrical this is. This would still work at a lot of sizes, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that's wrong with this is, is all about the, the size of the stem. And I just I noticed this here. Mm -hmm. What if, what if we took the hop shape, we maintained it, right? Mm -hmm. Except we just made the stem bigger and pointed like this. Ooh. So we could even do something like 
make you a little chimney up here by just putting a divot <laughs> in the top space. And oh, so now we've clever. got a thicker stem, right? the hop shape that's also pointed up, so it's a tree. Right. And then now we've got that house in the bottom. I like that. I mean, it could be something. Yeah, I, I like that a lot actually, just because it's so minimal. I think things we're going to have to look out for is the total width of this thing, mm -hmm. because our horseshoe shape is very wide here. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure that we're filling this gap, maybe this our CCA needs to come up or something just so that this feels comfortable in mm -hmm. there. And then the other thing is this little gap right here. Like it looks nice yeah. at this size, but when it's really tiny and if it's printed, that's going to get plugged up. Yeah, we'd have to be real careful, but I mean, we could also come up with different versions for different sizes as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm really, I, I like this a lot. Now that they have the mark they're confident in, it's time to let Min work her magic. As she works to incorporate the tree into the logo, Matthew and Ben check in to discuss the finer details of the presentation. Well, I think, I think we're there on the mark. Yeah, I think the mark is solid. That's it. So then now I gotta think about color. Now, I do know they wanted to move away from using the orange a lot. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Orange and red are gonna be, in the grand scheme of things, um, reduced. I like the white and blue as well. Yeah, like that. Bl the blue is really nice as a backdrop. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then any any time we combine the teal and the blue, I think it's solid. Mm -hmm. I think Kristen wants to move away from yellow on blue. Right. I mean, the white on blue probably looks like the safest option. One thing that we could explore for this shape, because I like your idea of that the outline, the stroke. Mm -hmm. Maybe this wants to be in a circle. And the reason why I say that is because the current lockup of everything is a circle shape. So I wonder if there's something replicated that feels like, you know, Hamilton Family Brewery that contains that shape in there. Just a thought. So maybe instead of putting it in a solid color mm -hmm. that is a circle, we just wrap it in Hamilton Family Brewery. As like text. Mm -hmm. That could be very cool as a small thing because mm -hmm. I, I like that a lot. And then now I feel like everything's related. From the smallest version of their logo to the full lockup like this. With exploration done and the presentation updated, Ben and Matthew get Josh on a video conference to present the final draft. Now at the end of the revision cycle, the two creative directors cross their fingers that their new logo will be well received. I think this is it. I think this is the only idea at this point that's gonna solve all of our issues with this. I think Josh is gonna buy it. I'm worried because He's gonna look at what we created, he's gonna look at that icon, and he's gonna see exactly what he didn't want. Just to kind of uh, cleanse the palette, this is where we started on the stylescape. You've seen this about a million times. And where we left off was this monogram version. And the feedback that we got from you was that we wanted to move past just the H. Um, we felt like the H was not as ownable as it could. So this is this is what you sent us. And we know that the, the icon needed to hit a couple things. We wanted to communicate hop, a tree, and a house. So I want to show you what we came up with. Obviously we went through just a few executions on this. So these, this is about a third of the explorations that we did. And where we netted out was this. Uh, oh, okay. So you can see the new icon fits really well in the lockup. And I want to discuss the actual icon in and of itself. So here it is isolated. And you can see that it says hop overall. That's the overall shape. But hops usually dangle down. So the stem is usually pointing up. So to communicate the tree, we took the whole shape and we flipped it upside down. And so you can see that there's both a tree and a hop in the overall shape. My favorite thing about the mark is that we have a little house shape as the stem. And the rest of the shape kind of blooms out of it as if it's growing out of the one thing, your house. When the full mark isn't applicable, we wanted something that was a little bit more contained, had a little bit less information, and was a little bit more simplified. So we came up with this mark that was kind of like a rubber stamp, where you had this seal of approval feel to it. So this is a secondary mark, and it works in a system like this. So since we have that central icon to hold everything together, we have the full logo, which can be used anytime you know, we have space for the full logo because we're communicating that family brewery, love people love beer, RCCA. But 
in cases where you want to communicate something a little bit different or flex the messaging a little bit, you can use that secondary mark. And so you can see a couple of executions here where we've gone, you know, we've replaced Hamilton Family Brewery with Love People Love Beer, limited edition 2018. And of course, in the smallest of spaces, we can use the icon in and of itself. Wow, that's really cool. That's great. Works great in one color. Works really well in small spaces. As you can see the hat there, it's just a, it's a great uh, mark for just to use on its own. That's cool. And then this is kind of new. We can use a combination of the messaging and the overprints to get that really kind of industrial, almost heritage -y feel from uh, the combination of this mark. That's cool. I like it. All right. What are your thoughts? Man, yeah, it's definitely, it's, yeah. I, I love the little house at the bottom. I think that was so clever because it's so subtle, you know? I like it a lot. I, yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. I, I definitely want to sit with it and, and look at it for sure and, and then show Kristen. She's going to tell me, I don't care you pick, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that other screen of all that filled the whole screen, that was all the stuff you guys did? Yeah. yeah, this is about a third of the, the, the options that we went through to get there. And a lot of this, we, we really wanted to make sure that it worked in small spaces and communicated all of the above, right? All three items. So yeah. lots of yeah. exploration. I can see on here when there's not the distinct hop leaves, it looks more like a tree, but then you lose the hop, huh? Right. And then there's the danger of uh, becoming a match that's a light, and all right. of a sudden oh, now you got a house oh, fire. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. If, if the house is too long, then you, you kind of lose the house on, yep. on, on some of these. Yep. yep. So that was the that was the very careful balancing act that we had to do is just to make sure that we get the proportion of the three things well balanced. Because mm -hmm. once we started to push, it's like, oh, we're losing the house, and then you know we pull back and and add more hop, and then it's like, well, now I don't see the tree, and because it is upright, because it does have the house, and because we can see the hop very distinctly in there, I feel like this is what we felt was probably the best balance out of the hundred that we explored. Yeah, dang. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that, that was like real helpful to see that other one was, um, can I go back to that? Is that okay? This slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, there's a lot on here that I'm like, oh, that's really cool, but then it's it's all, it's missing one of the three elements we're shooting for. <laughs> I like this stamp stuff too. That's, um, yeah, it looks great. It looks natural too with the original layout. That, that stamp's cool and then the other, Love people love beer one and, and almost you know the same the same looking stamp so there's no like confusion as mm -hmm. to who's doing what but then it's like oh this is the limited edition and it ties right in with everything else that's going on that's really cool. uh, that's really that's really something guys I like it and I can't wait to show Kristen I think she's gonna love it too. I am so relieved. <laughs> After a successful presentation, Ben and Matthew take a moment to reflect on their hard-earned victory. Yeah, I've had clients like Josh before, and they're great to work with because they're so collaborative, mm -hmm. but getting to that end decision, mm -hmm. you have to prove that you explored everything else mm -hmm. and that this is the one answer. And unless they see sketches, that's why I was on the hunt for sketches yesterday mm -hmm. too, because mm -hmm. I wanted to put pictures of sketchbooks in this presentation and like literally walk him through the process because right. that way he feels like he's been a part of it, right. which is important to him and I think it's great. Right. It's just a little bit of extra effort on our part documenting where we came from. Right. Yeah. Luckily yeah. we had an answer for everything and that's where we want to be. Where it's like, yes, we've exhausted the exploration. So those are great questions and we have a defense for it or at least a way to justify why we did something or did not do something. So that was very helpful. So it took it took a little while, but I'm, I, I could tell just like his smile started opening up. There was that aha moment for him. The blooming part? Yeah. Yeah. The blooming. That was yeah. a great story. I love that. It's like, yeah. yeah, everything's built. The foundation is on the house. Everything's it's bloomed and blossomed. Outside. That was yeah. a great story. I kind of knew that going into the meeting, it was either going to be one of those things where he's like, oh my God, you guys nailed it. Or I would have to convince him. And I... I as soon as as soon as the thing popped up and I didn't get that immediate like ah oh, gushing, it's like okay, we just got to push through, and I need to tell the story really really well. 
On our next episode, Matthew and Ben will tackle the new website for the brewery. Their aim is to deliver a design that is both unique and easy for the Hamiltons to maintain themselves. It will need to tell the brewery's story, showcase their beers, and relay information about their regular events. Web design, however, is complicated, so Matthew and Ben will have to figure out a way to create the site so that it can be easily modified by the Hamiltons. All of that is coming up on Building a Brand. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Let us know in the comments if you like the logo we designed, if you like one of the other variants that you saw. We're really interested to hear what you think. If you want to learn more about the design process, check out the links in the description below. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps us out. We'll see you on the next episode of Building a Brand.